Yeah, I think uh, the two weeks as a whole um, was a good run for me. Uh, a lot of you know positives to take away to for the for the rest of the year and, and going into next year. Um, it was really fun pay, playing my final slam of the year here and, and doing well in, in front of the American crowd. That was pretty uh, pretty special for me. And yeah, not the outcome I wanted in the match today. Um, some things to be disappointed about and. and the the uh, outcome, but uh, a lot of positives to take too, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to uh, getting back to work and getting back out there. Well, congratulations once again on just an outstanding two week run. Thanks, tremendous. Uh, name and affiliation, please be economical with your time in the time that we have. Chris, hey Ben, congrats on your run, Chris Otto with the U.S. Open. Talking about taking the positives, I just wonder if you can elaborate a little bit. Like, what can you can you learn and how can you grow from the experience of reaching the semis and of course today's experience facing one of the greatest that ever played the game? Yeah, I think um, I learned about a lot about myself um, these two weeks, knowing how you know deep I can go, how deep I can dig, um, you know what I can do competitively out on the tennis court because I think it's such a mental sport. Um, I think that's such a big side of it and. You know, I, th I, I kind of find, found a place where I can operate and, and still be calm and still be clear minded, but be a fierce competitor and uh, and uh, get after, you know, the guy that I'm playing at the same time. And, and really, you know, I say this a lot with the people on my team, but be a dog out there, have a dog mentality. So I, uh, I was pretty uh, happy with with the way that I competed throughout the tournament. All right. Matt. Yeah. Hey Ben, Matt Futterman for the New York Times. What uh, I mean, what was your sense of what was happening in the third set when you came on like that and turned it into such a battle? And then when it was over, I'm curious if you saw what he did with your gesture and what you thought about it. Yeah, I mean, with, with the roof closed in there, it was loud. I mean, really loud. And to uh, you know be playing the number two player in the world and and have as many people as as I had screaming. You know my name in there. It was it was a really cool atmosphere, and you could see some of the momentum shifting in in the uh, third set when I got a couple breaks. So uh, fun to be a part of that match, and obviously tough to not get that set at the end of the set. But I mean, yeah, the uh, the American crowd really brought it. And uh, to answer your second question, you know, uh, yeah, I didn't see it until after the match. Um, and, you know, I, I don't like when I'm on social media and I see people telling me how I can celebrate or can't celebrate. You know, I think if you, if you win the match, you, you deserve to, to do whatever you want. Um, you know, as a kid growing up, I always learned that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So that's Willie. all I have to say about that. Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. <clears throat> You spoke about what you learned in general from this whole experience. How about today? What did you learn from Novak Djokovic and about Novak Djokovic? Yeah, um, you know, I learned that he's a guy who can compete at the highest level, um, has, you know, a similar mentality to me on, on the court with uh, how he wants to come after you and, uh, and be aggressive and and uh, show his emotion. Um, and I, I, I think it was really cool to see that matchup for the first time and uh, looking forward to hopefully getting it again. Okay, David. I just wanted, when you, you would have come onto the court with certain expectations of what it would be like to face Novak Djokovic who you've been seeing on TV for many, many years. Was it different? Um. I don't know about different. I mean, I tried to go into the match with a really open mind. You know, it's like when I when I always watched him on TV, it was like I was a little kid, you know, who maybe wasn't even playing tennis yet or played a little bit of tennis, but was playing it for fun. And and I think that I'm a completely different person now than I was then. So honestly, when I went onto the court, I wasn't expecting anything than, you know, the, the tape that I've watched from his last few matches here. And I 
kind of just went into the match like I was, you know, playing any other player. Yeah. Cindy. Uh, ben, Cindy Schmerler, also from the New York Times. You leave here and you go to Vancouver for Labor Cup. Can you talk about, you know, the important, the, the fact that you've been chosen for this high, high level team and what your expectations are? Yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited for the opportunity to play Labor Cup. Um, you know, when the uh, when the announcement first came out, I see all these comments on Instagram. Oh, why'd you take him? Why, why this guy? There's there's so many higher ranked guys. So coming into the U.S. Open, it was like, okay, I, I really have something to prove, and I I wanted to, you know, show people that maybe I deserve to be on the team, or the people who said that I didn't, you know, kind of prove them wrong. And uh, I had a pretty good run here, and, and I'm, uh, I'm happy that hopefully I was able to uh, prove a few people wrong. Okay. And your expectations going in? Sorry, that was the only I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm pretty pumped to uh, be in a team atmosphere. You know, I love those type of competitions. Uh, first, you know, team tournament that I'll be a part of since I left college. So uh, all positive thoughts going into the Labor Cup, and I'm going to be you know, just as amped and, and emotional as I was here at, in Vancouver. Ava. Oh, sorry. David. Ava Wallace, The Washington Post. Um, ben, you had so many firsts this year. It was obviously your, your first year on tour, and, and I know your, um, your year is not done, but I'm wondering in, in what ways you felt like you grew up this year at all. Um, maybe a couple of things that stand out just in terms of being a tennis professional now. Yeah, I uh, I definitely learned a lot of things. You know, the list could go on and on, uh, going to so many different, you know, countries and, and playing on different surfaces and just being exposed to uh, different things. Um, I'd say the biggest thing that I kind of learned that kind of is shaping me as a person as we speak is, you know, the, the influence that professional athletes have on this stage, um, you know, ten tennis is a huge sport, a worldwide sport. Um, it was kind of crazy for me the first time I uh, touched down in, in Portugal for my first tournament in Europe, you know, that there were people at the match screaming my name or knew who I was. Uh, that was kind of hard for me to believe. But uh, I think that it's definitely made me think a little bit more about how I act on the court, what message you know I'm giving in, in my interviews, um, the things I say, and and because uh, I think it goes a long way, and I think that a lot of people are really listening to the things that you say and watching what you do. Right, Kurt. Ben Kurt Streeter from the New York Times. The strength of your game is your serve. You're facing the today. You face the greatest returner probably in history, and. You were throwing in some bombs, and he just kept getting them back and getting them back. I'm wondering how that feels. It's probably kind of a little bit different than other returners. And also, if you learned anything about your, maybe your returns by facing him. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I felt hugely different with how the ball was coming back in terms of, you know, like pace or, or location, but he definitely – did a great job of, you know, percentage of balls that he got back in the court. Um, and, yeah, uh, and going into it, you know that, you know, he's a great returner and, and a great defender. And, honestly, the thing that I was pl most pleased about this week is, for the most part, I didn't have my highest end serving. Um, you know, against Karatsev, I had a really, really good serving day in, in the third round. But apart from that, I had another gear that, or I have another gear that I can go to in terms of serving, and I just, you know, wasn't really able to find it, um, you know, the last three matches. But the thing that stuck out to me the most was how I was able to go toe to toe with these guys from the ground, and everyone is like, oh, you know, Ben's a server, but in the neutral rallies, I felt pretty comfortable um, playing against the last you know four guys that i've played are very high level um baseliners um great ground strokes and i felt comfortable staying in a rally with them um playing points not checking out but going going deep in in points from the ground and and all court up at the net too so i was pleased with with the way that i was able to play fairly complete tennis this week. I didn't feel like I was just, you know, being a serve bot and, and getting free points to my serve, but I was I was backing it up. Howard. 
Ben Howard Fenrich with the Associated Press. How would you describe the difference in what you saw on the other side of the net from maybe other top players you've played? Um. Yeah, I think uh, I think Novak has a little more uh, a little more fire to him than than other guys that I've played. Um, you can just you can see the competitive spirit, you know, kind of just oozing out of him, and uh, he's he's like that for pretty much the whole match. He's pretty locked in, and and it's funny because a lot of the things that I saw in my myself this week with how I was trying to be on the court um, competitively and just fire at all times, it was something that I was kind of seeing from him as well. And uh, I think that that's maybe something that's a little bit different than some of the other top players I faced. I wouldn't say everybody, but some. I only have time for two more. Craig, Bill. Ben, Craig Gabriel, Nine Australia. Um, what's the biggest issue for you tonight? tonight? Disappointment, or this is a, a step? A, <clears throat> sorry, a step in your career. Yeah, I think everything is a step in your career, uh, win or loss. I'm at a point where, you know, the losses don't break me because I have very long-term goals. Um, as a team, we're very process-oriented, and we just know that this is part of the process. Um, so there's a small piece of it is disappointment, obviously. I'm a competitor. Uh, I think that... I show that for the most part out on the court, and every loss hurts. You know, it cuts it cuts you a little bit. But if anything, this this week has just motivated me more. I feel like last uh, last time I had a big run in Australia, uh, I, I got fairly complacent after after it happened, and uh, I thought that I'd really you know done something or got to some place, um, and you know had a couple tough months after that and yeah a lot of new experiences on different continents and different surfaces but I think that after this run I totally have a different feeling moving forward to the rest of this year and the start of 2024 where uh, I'm, I'm really going to be pushing forward now and it's it's kind of uh, kind of gotten me to a place where I'm going to work that much harder. Bill last question. Bill, Bill Simons inside tennis. Uh, great congratulations. Uh, this is kind of a tough question and the press conference on, but uh, Taylor and Tommy, Francis, Chris, yourself, all have had these just spectacular runs. And I know you guys emphasize the importance of, of process. But still, to fans, you know, the sport is ultimately about summiting and getting through the mountain. So what do you think, it, what do you think uh, the obvious question, what do you think it will take to to get to the very top for, for one of us or for one of us Americans or yourself? This is a question that I've answered often <laughs> over the last few months or, you know, since I've been out on tour. And uh, I'm not really sure what it's going to take. I don't know if it's going to be me. I don't know if it's going to be someone else who breaks through. Uh, I always say that American tennis seems to be moving in a great direction, the right direction. We have guys making it deep in slams and and a lot of us here, three in the quarterfinals, uh, are pushing through, not just on the men's side, but the women's side too. Coco Goff in the final, uh, Madison Keys, a semifinalist. So it's a pretty cool time to uh, be an American in tennis. Uh, I wish I could you know, have a ball that says when and who is going to be the American who is the first guy since Andy Roddick to win a Grand Slam, but unfortunately, I don't have that. <laughs>